Hey, what's up? It's Ross. Uh, this episode where it's kind of fun to do, but it's also really easy to end up in the weeds. So I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet and stick to the uh, talking points that I have for a reason. And yeah, we'll see you on the other side of this. Let's get it going. So this is episode six, and it's kind of meet the baddies. And it's who, what, why, and how. Um, where? I would say everywhere. It, they're everywhere, to be completely honest. But let's get into the actual stuff of everything, right? So meet the baddies. Who are the baddies? Uh, a lot of people, they'll say the Illuminati, and they think that it's just one group of people. The truth is, there's multiple secret societies, and there's evidence of that like in plain sight if people actually look for it. There's corporations that have a large stake in this. There's incredibly rich individuals that have a stake in the way that the world plays out. There's governments that have a stake in all of this. There's bloodlines, like bloodlines of families that have a stake in this. And then there's people that are just famous that aren't necessarily incredibly rich yet, but have a big sway and power that are a part of this. And there's probably other people too that I'm not even thinking of, but like those are the big ones that I can think of. And all of those people can also be in multiple factions of stuff too, right? So it's a lot more complex than people would like to believe. And I would also say that there's probably a level of, um, there's probably some people that are in it for good reasons. And there's probably some people that are in it for not so good reasons, right? For the most part, though, when you think of secret societies, you don't think of people doing things uh, in your best interest. It's often people doing things behind your back or taking advantage of you. And from what I've found, that generally is the case with a lot of these more malicious ones. There are some secret societies that are really just about presenting information um, from what I've seen. And maybe those are more benign. But anyhow, let's move on from the who because I think you get the general idea. So secret societies would be like uh, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, people like that. O on some wavelength or on some, on some element, these... These people have an implication, or they have influence, I should say. Um, if there's a lot of elderly people that are joined in these things and they're working on a town or they're working in a town government, they're more likely to sway political opinion. Um, there's lots of different ways that, there's obvious, that are obvious that secret societies can impact stuff. Um, corporations, they have the money to influence people. They have the money to influence government. They have the money to influence small towns. Um, so obviously there are players in controlling things, incredibly rich people. Um, they will, some of them will want a servant class of people specifically. So they work towards that end, right? Governments want people to fall in line. Certain bloodlines want people to be servants to them. Famous people need people to like adore them and to put them at the center of attention. Like, all of this stuff makes sense when you really think about it, but some people don't want to peer between that little lens, right? So you get the idea of who we're talking about. What the F are they doing now? Let me take a sip of my coffee. War profiteering. So making money off of war. It's like one of the oldest tricks in the books that they do. Um, drug dealing selling drugs there was a whole iran contra scandal which was like publicly released in the 80s that the cia was involved in dealing drugs and if you look at the war in afghanistan there was the taliban that was keeping these opium crops out then you see the taliban get taken out the opium production comes up there's a spike in heroin addiction in the united states then there's all of these uh, heroin um, medications to help people come off heroin that are legally prescribed. So then there's these people making legal money off of heroin. You got to tell me that there, something's up there, dude. Like, I guess that there's even documentaries that have come out. Like, this is a theory that I had back in like 2010 
before I was involved in like recovery and everything. But then after going through recovery and seeing it, like I legitimately think there's fact to that. And then I've heard that other people have put that same theory together and that's holding more and more weight. Um, arms dealing, dude, just come on. There's all sorts of evidence of the government selling arms to people that they shouldn't sell. And I'm sure that that goes on in lots of other different ways too. Human trafficking, uh, we know that that's going on and that there's been people in the government that have been involved in it. Uh, the whole Epstein thing, Epstein, I'm not even going to get into that, right? Sexual abuse, um, again, that goes on in these groups. Uh, genocide, that one's kind of hard to put there in that regard. But if you look at the way that some of these corporations have done certain things, they have done genocidal things. And even some people in power have taken that turn. Now, that one is probably a little bit less likely than some of the other ones. Like that one, uh, maybe I shouldn't have put on the list, but it has occurred. Or to the best of their ability, they have put those plans in places at certain times and things. Destabilizing governments. That's a big one that the U.S. is big on. And look. If people don't believe me in any of this stuff, because this is me making a lot of accusations without giving any evidence to anything that I'm saying, um, just because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, I just want to let people know, like, I get the power structure. I think it's important to have knowledge of it, but then to also understand that how you combat this power structure is a lot different than the way that most people are going at it. Um, is why I made this. Why do these people do this is an important question. Um, greed. Fear should have been the top one, right? Because fear is the unifying thing of greed, greed hunger for power. Um, fear is the motivating thing. They're afraid that if they don't have these resources, if they don't have this power, if they don't have this attention, if they don't have whatever it is that they need, they'll, that they won't be successful so they go out of their way and put all of these other people through all of this pain um, to provide them with a little bit of a level of comfort to ease their anxiety if you will but the thing is it never actually works and it really this kind of it's a self-perpetuating system at some point let me take a sip of the coffee again Because how they go about, oh, sorry, how they go about it ends up leaving them in a perpetual need of having to rein, reinstate themselves. If there was like an acceptance of their situation, they could move past fear. But because they're constantly denying what they're afraid of, uh, they're constantly reinstating that fear. How do they go about instilling things? Uh, digital echo chambers is one way. So a digital echo chamber, think of like when you go on Facebook, right? A lot of the times it's a lot of the same type of content that you enjoy <laughs> coming up repeatedly because Facebook is literally an algorithm that is conditioned to show you the stuff that will get you to react in certain ways. So if you're seeing stuff that pisses you off all the time, Facebook is showing you that because it, you respond in a way that is positive to the algorithm. But the digital echo chambers generally keep you in small groups that are telling you the exact same opinions so you never really grow beyond it. So you like keep this very baseline understanding of your topic. Um, they use symbolism to keep you stuck. This one's a little bit more tricky, but symbolism, you often make associations and these associations can impact your consciousness on some level. But for example, um, symbolism could be as simple as something like teams. The symbolism of a team can prevent you from building a connection or a relationship with a friend who might have helpful information just because of their, like, their team logo being different. And that sounds stupid, but it happens all the time. Um, propaganda is another way that they keep people stuck. So misinformation. Misinformation is giving you wrong information. Disinformation is, there, there's a way that these two are slightly different and I can't recall it right now. So I'm not going to make a quote and tell you incorrectly. Um, 
research both of those and look at the difference between them because there's a subtle difference. Uh, the other one would be media. Like these people get you through the media all the time by showing you different things, telling you uh, sound bites of information without getting you to look at it critically, digesting all of these intense ideas for you and giving you feedback. And then cultural programming is by getting other people to fall into this exact same system and like basically create their own character, they're encouraging you to do the same. A lot of who we are when we operate in society isn't necessarily who we are. It's our own avatar to navigate culture. It's a fucking heavy concept. Wow. Um, and I don't have the recapitulation for this because it's pretty straightforward. The baddies are corporations and uh, families, bloodlines, elitists, all of this stuff. They're, it doesn't matter what political party. doesn't really matter what race, gender, age, creed you are. They want everybody. <laughs> They're... All sorts of different reasons for that. There's all sorts of different people vying for control. The important thing, though, is how we fight back. And I'll share that in the next episode. And don't worry, I'm not going to tell you to like run out and do anything stupid. How we fight back is a lot different than the way most people approach this. And I promise you it's a lot more peaceful and a lot more grounded. Because if things are as out of control as I would say they are, we have to remember there's some saving grace in all of that. And we'll explain that next episode. Anyhow, thank you so much. I appreciate you listening and we'll chat again soon. Peace.